today I'm going to be tying some mayflies. Uh, there's been some very nice fish caught on the river recently and last week in May and the first week in June is traditionally the peak of the mayfly season and in recent years our little river close to home here uh, has benefited from quite a good uh, mayfly hatch. Uh, certainly in the upper reaches close to where I live the, and uh, it also brings out some much bigger fish that you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't imagine were there in such a small river. So uh, <coughs> I'm going to tie some parachute style uh, mayfly duns. Um, I usually do them in two stages, I tie the wing post and the body first and then uh, tie the, the hackle around the, the post afterwards. So I'll show you in two stages how we do it. Start off with a fine thread and a size 12 hoop. Those are the hoops I'm using. So I'll wind that around the hoop. Like so. base. This is quite a simple mayfly to tie, you can knock off quite a few of them in, uh, in one shot. Should be three strands if we're being accurate to the actual insect but I usually put a few more in because tend to get bitten off, especially if the trout are in a, in a good mood and they're hungry. It wants to be a little bit longer, so I'll just pull it back a bit. The mayfly is uh, the biggest of the, uh, the upwing flies, more correctly called uh, the green drake. Usually I like to have a little bit of sort of fuzz and life around the body. Like I said, the real insect is uh, it's quite quite a thin body, but this just gives the impression of uh, a little bit of life about it. The stuff I'm using here is actually uh, a sort of predator flies and streamers it's um, it's like a short short rolls or greenish yellowy sort of dubbing floss which you use for the, the bodies of streamers uh, I'll probably do a pipe fly tying video at some stage but it's just giving it a little bit of buzz sort of bring this, uh, this fly to life a bit. Just have a little loop there. That's it. And I think I'll leave a bit of it sticking up to use for the wing post. For the actual wing post I'm going to use a bit of this uh, Antron which is a nice bright white material that uh, is very buoyant and it, it shows up very well in sort of little fast rapid runs which are the places I like to fish the dry fly because I think the trout are a little less cautious in the fast water so anything that shows up is very useful. So there's a bit of a, so largely white but a little bit of a green tinge to that now. I'll bring the thread round in a figure of eight so that sticks right up. 
you can see that sort of square off to the body if I just break those tails up a bit you can see the, the look of an insect starting to form now so we'll just trim that antron off nice sort of tall wing post now we're going to actually wrap the hackle round that wing post so it's handy if it's a bit rigid I usually do these in batches of several flies I'll get them to this stage and we'll get a bit of epoxy resin and coat just round the edge to give it that little bit of rigidity right, so we'll get a little bit of epoxy and just mix some here and the base of that wing post and it just keeps it nice and rigid I'm just using a fairly cheap epoxy resin here you can get the fancy stuff that cures from a, a sort of ultra ultraviolet gun or a torch but I find this stuff is just fine it's only about less than a fiver for a, a two-pack tube and it uh, it's fine for the uh, for my fly tying purposes my flies aren't works of art they'd never win any beauty prizes but I make them to catch fish rather than uh, put in glass cases so we'll leave that to set once I've tied it off and it's a two stage process I'll, I'll make a few of those and then come back and uh, finish them off with the with the hackles afterwards. A couple of loops around there. Turn it off. Give that a few hours to set and then we'll, we'll do stage, stage two. The a teal wing post more of a traditional dress in that um, doesn't tend to float quite as well as the antron and not quite as visible in sort of rapids um, and bits of rough water where you might be picking some good trout up uh, but interesting variation uh, mayflies generally much bigger than the normal run of trout and grail in dry flies which uh, tend to be sort of 14s right down to Oh, tiny 24s and 26s for sort of the midge dressings. I never bother with anything like that to be honest. It, it, below about size 20 it gets to be too much trouble to tie the flies for me. Okay, so this is uh, stage two of the, uh, the mayfly. The wing post uh, has set now, the epoxy resin is nice and rigid, holding that up with a nice stiff base for us to wrap the hackle around. This is the hackle which is a nice badger cock hackle. Not the best quality, but I don't think it matters. So we'll get that secured. This is where it differs from a traditional dry fly where the, the hackles wound around the hook we actually wind it round that wing post the fibres flare out and form that sort of parachute which makes the fly land nice, nice and softly plus it's got that buzz that I spoke about earlier that tends to excite the trout it suggests a struggling hatching insect it's taking a bit of time to get off the water a vulnerable prey really, that's what all predators love. So, trap that end in, give it a couple of turns while I'm holding back these ankle fibres that we want to stay spun. From that point I can trim the hackle off.
let the tail out a bit. Pull these back and then just make a, a finishing knot at the end. A couple of turns and then the whip in. pretty well it, the little spot of varnish on the, the head. Link hammer style parachute mayfly. All ready to go as soon as these uh, winds drop and we can get fishing again. Mm -hmm. 